what to do after high school can be difficult, but not impossible. Find out what today's teens plan to do with their lives after graduation up our alley. And Father Pat Lavin visits his alma mater, St. John Newman High School in South Philadelphia. All this on an edition just for teens, next on Catholic Magazine. With your window on your world, this is Catholic Magazine. Good evening, everyone. I'm Paul Perillo. Good evening. I'm Pat Shelton. Well, the future of America has an opportunity to express themselves on Catholic Magazine in our forum entitled Up Our Alley. So stay tuned to see what they discuss today. Also on tonight's program, Father Pat Lavin takes a trip down memory lane. But first, is there life after high school? Of course there is, but what are the options available for you after you have that piece of paper? Let's go up our alley with our young people to hear what they have to say. Recently, one of our student producers brought in to me some of the information she had been receiving from colleges over the past couple months. As you can see, it's quite a pile. But whether it's the armed forces, college, or the working world, life after high school, that's our subject tonight, Up Our Alley. Up Our Alley is a forum which gives Catholic youth from the Delaware Valley an opportunity for expression and education through discussion. Now let's join Sue and her friends in the alley. Hello again, and thanks for joining us, Up Our Alley. Tonight, we're talking about life after high school. Joining us in the alley are Jerry Bowers, a career counselor from Cardinal O'Hara High School. On my left, we have from the Diocese of Camden, George Melendez and Karen Steinhagen. To my right, from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, Megan Sargent and Anne Marie Glaze. And on the fire escape, from the Diocese of Camden, Gabriel Arroyo. And from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, Tanya Serrano. Thanks, everyone, for being with us. Thank you. We're talking about how to decide what you're going to do after high school. There are many options, but what do you guys think are some of the options that you might choose for life after high school? Um, well, for me, um, I would like to go to college after high school. I'm a senior right now, and I'm choosing what college to go to. So for me, college is what I'm going to be doing after high school. Okay. Anybody else going to go to college? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a scholarship to Moore College of Art and Design, and I'm just looking forward to going there. I wish I could finish high school right now and go there. So I think it starts after high school, you know. Okay. What are some of the other options for high school grads other than college? Well, like, you know, I don't really go to high school, but, you know, um, I go to a GED program, and, um, you know, and I've never been to high school. Okay. But, okay. you know. Let me just interrupt you there one minute. Jerry, can you just explain to us, in case someone's not familiar with what GED actually is? Uh, the GED means that uh, someone who has not completed their high school career can go through a program at a community college. There are many places that offer it and they get their equivalent of a high, a high school, school diploma. diploma. Yeah. Okay, which it, is what it you're doing the same thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so are you going to continue on after you get your GED certificate or well, after I get my um my GED, I, I plan to go to like a trade school. Okay. You know, to um you know pick up a trade. You know, get a nice job, money. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anybody considering the armed forces, working world? No, you're all kind of college. Yeah. Okay. Um, a large majority of high school graduates do go to college and because in light of that fact we are going to be focusing mainly on college options tonight. Um, what factors would help you guys to decide which college you want to go to? Um, well I know of myself where it's located is one of the big factors. Okay so locations is a major factor. Yes and um, also the programs they offer is another like one big thing that I know a lot of people look into. Okay, the, the specific programs for the major you're interested mm -hmm. in. You are decided on a major then? Yeah. Okay. How about everyone else? Have you all kind of decided which college you're going to go well, to? Where? Me. Um, I would like to attend Notre Dame because I'm into sports and I, I want to become a professional football player. And to become that, you have to have a certain um, grade point average. And it's very hard to, to um, be in a sport and have a major, but I plan to do so. Um, and professional doesn't last for the rest of your life, so I have to pick a second thing that I want to do, and I want to major in business. One day I'd like to join, uh, own my own company. 
So okay, so you're, you're going to be a big business major. Yes. Okay, Tanya, what about what about you? Um, you're not deciding. You're still looking. Well, not really. I want to study law, so I was thinking if I can go to um, just a school that has a good law. Okay, but you're not quite decided on which college yet. No, no. no. Okay, Jerry, what what advice would you offer to someone who might come to you and say, you know, I'm thinking of going to college, but I don't know exactly which college I want to go to? Well, I think first of all, you have to think about uh, your interest. What is my major going to be? And uh, once you know what that is, then you have to think of the location of the school. Uh, is it something where you're going to commute? Or can you board? Is it just two hours away? Can it be five states away? What's the size of the school? Do you want something small? Or do you want something large as a state school? I think these are some of the considerations that, that you might have. I also might say, too, that I think it's important to visit, visit, visit. And when you're thinking of schools, I know that you're looking at a lot of schools, you should really choose about five and apply to five schools. And it's in the area of this is my first choice, this is my second, this is my third, and so forth. But it's very important to kind of get a flavor of what the school is like. And you can't do that unless you visit. Okay. Have most of you decided what you're going to major in? Yes. Yes. George, any, any thoughts on what kind of vocational school you want to go to? What kind of job you want to get eventually? Well, I would like to be. Um, I'm not really sure yet. You're not uh, sure. No. Nah. Jerry, would it be the same then with George? George would have to visit different technical schools and vocational schools oh, to decide absolutely. which. Absolutely. Yes, you would. And uh, I think it's difficult when you really don't have a focus, and when you don't have an interest. I know that uh, at O'Hara we use what is known as the COPS Interest Survey. And I happen to bring a copy with me today. And if the test takes for grading and everything about an hour. And it might give a sense of direction as to, oh, I have an interest in this, I have an interest in that. It doesn't mean that you have the ability, but when you it's like where your this, interests lie. Yes, where they lie. Uh, another one uh, that is quite popular is the Strong Campbell. So that might be uh, an avenue for someone to explore when they're really just not sure of what they would like to get into in terms of a major. Is everyone kind of decided? You decide, Karen, on what you want to major in? Yeah, I think I'm going to go into illustration and get my art teacher's degree. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Time you're undecided. Business. Business. Education. Education. I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to be a nurse. Okay. Um, it seems like business-related majors are probably the most popular um, today. But uh, what if someone's on the site like Tanya? What What do you guys think would be some of the options that she that you could go into? You know, uh, business, communications, any anything at all that you're, you're kind yeah. of interested in? I was thinking about law, studying law. Studying law. Yeah. Okay, Jerry. So I guess with Tanya, since she's a little undecided, then one of the interest tests would be good for her. Oh, absolutely, it would. Uh, sometimes you're surprised by the results. Uh, something else that I also tell the students, too, especially those who have no idea of really what they want to get into, there are so many books in your career center, and I just brought a few along with me. And this is called America's 50 Fastest Growing Jobs. And you could look through here. It might be that you're getting into a career that you know nothing about right now. Uh, another one is New Emerging Careers Today, Tomorrow, and the 21st Century. Uh, you're inundated with information, but I think if you want to make a wise choice, you have to gather more than you really need. So it's kind of like um, working for a term paper. It's more than you need, but in order to find what you want, you're going to have to do a lot of exploring. Okay. Did anyone consult any of these books in their library, in their, in their career center when they were? You all kind of knew what you wanted, huh? Yeah. yeah. What made you decide, actually, what, what, what major you wanted to take? Um, for me, um, for to be a nurse, I like to work with people. And uh, right now I have a job in a nursing home, and I work with the elderly. And that just gives me like a whole new experience, finding out like what the nurses do. Um, working in the healthcare industry, that's like, really interesting for me. So, and um, just dealing with the people and helping them feel better and knowing what to give them and how to treat for certain problems they have. That's just like really exciting, and I see the nursing field open. There's like thousands of things you can do for nursing, and I see like all kinds of possibilities. So I'm like really excited to be a nurse. Okay, how about with education? What what made you decide on education? Um, well, for the past two summers, I've worked with children at a day camp, and during like this year, I've worked with um, working with kids, and I love to work with kids, so I kind of want to do it for the rest of my life. 
Anybody else want to share anything? What, what helped them decide what major they wanted to go in? Or? Well, I took Saturday and summer classes at the college, of Moore College, so that helped me decide where I wanted to go. So programs like that are really helpful. Okay, I guess all of you have gotten piles like this one um, <laughs> yeah. with, with college catalogs. I know I did. Um, have, have you gone through them? Have you sorted through? Have you looked like for different colleges that you want to visit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like Jerry said, have you you know applied to five? Or are you going out on visits? At and, least. You know, are you starting already? I mean, during the summer, I visited about five or six colleges. Some mm -hmm. as far as away as West Virginia and Ohio, Southern Pennsylvania. But um, basically, when I, I look at a college and I, I open it up sometimes, but mostly right now I have an idea of where I'm going. Um, but I've I visited several colleges and I've applied to four right now, so I'm just waiting to see what goes. What goes? What goes? What happens? And I hope I get a you know they they say I'm allowed to go in January. It's well, it's January now. Um, is it too early to start applying at this point, or should they have already started to apply? And no, I think it? this is about the right time for applying, okay. but I think that what a lot of students do is they wait till senior year to even start investigating. A lot of things should be done junior year, the end of junior year, and even maybe even over the summer, starting to explore so that when senior year comes, you don't panic, because that's where a lot of kids are now. They panic. They panic yeah. I'll just go any place. Well, you can't do that. You can't go just any place. Okay. Uh, since time is a little undecided, and she wants to go for, she's thinking law, is it okay to go in as an undecided major? Yes, and what I suggest to the students too is uh, if they want to buy a little time and funds are you know, at a premium, which they are with most people, the community colleges have some wonderful programs and uh, you might get in the liberal arts end of your education at that particular time and maybe getting into it just for a few months, then you have a better sense of what you want to do, but you buy time and I think that's important. Okay. Would it be another option for someone who's undecided maybe to go in and, and maybe work for a couple years and then go back? Oh yes, a lot of people do that. I, I, I'm okay, also like, uh, like if George is deciding to go to, to a vocational or technical school and then eventually you might want to decide to go to college. Yeah, That's another that. option for you, right? You consider yes. It? Yes, yeah. I, I think if you're really not sure, you could always go out into the work world as long as you have a skill. But if you don't, then a lot of the kids think, well, I'll go maybe to a community college. What do, you, what do you think college life is going to be like? Is it going to be radically different for you than high school? Think you're going to enjoy it? Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to enjoy college because I want to go to Notre Dame. I want to get out the state. I want to experience life. I want to experience how to um, be responsible for myself and to meet whole types of different people, um, the cultures. And I think if I go down there, it would be a great feeling and won't have mothers on your back telling you what to do. <laughs> but, uh, I think it would be a great feeling. It would be a nice accomplishment for me to It's a whole new It's a whole new life. Yeah. Whole new life. How about everybody else? You think it's, it's a little scary for you? It's exciting? It's a bit apprehensive. Like, I hit me a couple months ago that this is like the first time I'm going to be living in, at my house like 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 then because I'm going to be living in dorms, I'm going to be living in apartments, I'm going to be living maybe in a house you know, I get older mm -hmm. and it's kind of scary. I mean, you, you're, you're finally getting settled to life and then change comes and you don't know how to handle it sometimes, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited for college. Okay, is everyone going away to college or staying basically close to home? Close. Close. But I haven't decided if I'm going to live there or home yet because of the funding, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Expensive. Yeah. What about financial aid, Jerry? Um, college is expensive, let's face it. Um, well, it is, and there are a lot of scholarships around. What you have to do is visit your um, center, your counseling center, and find out. Now, some have to be paid back and some don't, but there is money. And uh, it's not all scholarship money, some grant money and so forth. But um, you wouldn't want to do anything until after January because of having to submit uh, tax returns and things like that. So. It, it might be too soon now, certainly, but, but January is a good time. Okay. What, when you think about college and vocational school, what worries you the most about, about that? I'm not really sure, but you know, probably the work, you know, to try to, um, I say, to understand the work and, um, you know, get to know it and stuff. You mean to get to learn the skill? Yes. So that scares you because it's probably something you've never done mm -hmm. or you're a little apprehensive about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, 
since I want to be in a football team, um, it's going to be harder for me because I just found out when I hit senior year, I had to have a 2.5 average at the um, SAT test. And um, sorry, a 2.5 average, and I got a score of 900 in the SATs. So it's going to be difficult for me. So it's going to be pretty hard. I got to hit the books every night. So, so I can No fooling around, right? No fooling around. No partying <laughs> and all the rest. I think all got to go. <laughs> Because um, what you're doing is the Catholic school, and they were very strict with grades, so I have to be hitting those books, and it's be difficult, but I know I can do it. Yeah, it'll be worth it in the end, right? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, anybody else have any worries they might want to, you know, express? You're just all looking forward to it, I guess? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. it's exciting. Jerry, just in about the 30 seconds we have left. Is there anything else you can you can offer us as to, you know, helping kids decide if, they, if they're undecided at this point what they want to do? Well, I just wanted to comment for a minute on that transition uh, from high school to college. And I think a lot of it has to do with time management. Uh, you, you know, there is that sense of, well, I'm free now, I can do what I want to do. So I think time management is the biggest concern for students. Okay, great. There's a lot of good information shared here today. Um, deciding what to do after high school is never easy, but there are places you can go. There are people you can talk to, your guidance counselor, your career center. They're all there to help you. Another option would be to talk to your parents, talk to your friends. Um, the more you can express your feelings, the easier it's going to be. I want to thank everyone for being with us in the alley, you at home. Until we meet you again next time, good night. From Is There Life After High School to Remembering Life in High School, Father Lavin is next with a reflection on those great high school days. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. One of the most important things you can ever learn here is to pray, to speak to God, to express what is in your heart, to show your dependence on Him, to thank Him for the gift of life, for your families, and for everything you have received. My hero, Isaiah Thomas, Kevin Costner, Mr. Wong. These are teachers, but to the kids they've reached, they're heroes. My hero, Mrs. Wooten. If I don't get through to that child, who knows, maybe no one else will. Teachers have the power to wake up young minds, to be heroes, to make a difference. Reach for that power. Teach. Find out how by calling 1-800-45-TEACH. Be a teacher. Be a hero. Couldn't have gotten through physics without you. Yeah, well, you're on your own at college. It's not fair. That's all right. I'm gonna get a job, you know, start working, I'm safe. And I'll be in college in another year or two. Support the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. We welcome your comments, suggestions, and donations and encourage you to write us at Catholic Magazine, St. Charles Seminary, 1000 East Wynwood Road, Overbrook, PA, 19096, or call us during regular business hours at 668-9842. Up next on Catholic Magazine, Father Pat Lavin weaves some nostalgia as he travels to Newman High School in the heart of South Philadelphia. Welcome to the School of Three Names. Back in 1934, the Norbertine Fathers founded Southeast Catholic High School for Boys at 7th and Christian in the heart of the Italian market of South Philadelphia. In 1956, I had the privilege of coming in through these doors as the first class to spend four years here as Bishop Newman High School for boys. Later, the name was changed to St. John Newman when the fourth Bishop of Philadelphia was declared a saint of the church. 
oh, when I came here, the halls were so spick and span, and everything was nice, and the whole school managed to cover a whole square block of South Philadelphia. Today, it now is a very unique campus because through the generosity of the Medical Brothers and also a million dollar of donation from the Alumni Association, the school now is two blocks square and it includes a track field, a baseball diamond and a football field. Oh, there are many, many fine days spent here. Our religious faculty, besides the Norbertines, were made up of the T.O.R. Franciscans, of the Polish Franciscans, whom we used to call Twinkle Toes because they're the only people I know that would walk through snowstorms with sandals and bare feet. We had diocesan priests here, and we also had the Belgium Shoot Fathers who came to the school when their missions in China were closed. These hallowed halls boast of the founder and the past president of the National Catholic Education Association in Washington, D.C., of the dean of the University Law School of Villanova, of one of our Emmy winners, also an abbot of the Norbertine community, and over 250 priests and religious came through these halls. Thousands of students have been educated by the Norbertine fathers and the lay faculty of this community. We were trained with food for our bodies, for our souls, and for our minds. And for this, we are extremely, extremely grateful for everything that these people have done for us. Oh, I remember the days when those gentlemen tried to pound into my head the basics of Latin, oh, I hated the language, of biology, of chemistry, of algebra, and trigonometry, and, ge and geometry. And I also remember the days when I pounded my head on the football field down at the lakes near the naval base. As a matter of fact, it was there that I broke my leg and also I broke my nose. As a matter of fact, not once, but I broke it eight times. It's still beautiful. It has a slight curve to it, but it's still going. And it stays on there. Oh, God, I remember the days of spending hour upon hour upon hour up at Big Brothers swimming laps. I specialized in the 100 and the 200-yard freestyle, and I was the anchor man in the freestyle and the medley relays. I will never forget the time at Villanova University we were having a championship swim meet, and I dove into the water, and I forgot to tie the string that holds the bathing suit on. And halfway through the race, out of the bathing suit I came, and it was one of the most embarrassing moments of my teenage career because the stands were filled with a mixed audience. How you doing, guys? Oh, how I remember the days in this gymnasium. Every Saturday we would come here to prepare for the great social event of South Philadelphia the Saturday night dance. Oh gosh, it was here where I learned how to decorate a gymnasium and it was here where I'm reminded of many, many a story. I will never forget the day that I climbed up a ladder. We did away with the A-frame ladder and we had this straight ladder that went right up and had a bucket on the end. And my job was to climb up it and to attach the motor for the mirrored ball to hang from it for the dance. And I climbed up that ladder, got to the top of this ceiling, and the next thing I know, it started to sway back and forth, and I started to sweat putty balls, and they were dropping off, falling two and a half stories down to this floor and splashing up again. It was then that Father Cox, who ran the dances, came up that ladder, and it was swaying, and I was scared to death. And finally, he looked at me straight in the eye because he knew I was frozen stiff, and he talked me all the way back down to the floor. I can assure you, that's the last time I ever climbed a ladder that high. As a matter of fact, I won't climb over a ladder more than 12 feet. That dance had many, many fine times and many fine moments. I remember the nights when we had the special guests come. There was Connie Francis and Joni James, and there was the Everly Brothers, and there was one of my classmates by the name of Bobby Rydell, and from the kid I grew up with around the corner, Frankie Avalon. And then there was the Thanksgiving turkey trot when we had Al Alberts and the Four Aces. The experience of this dance also taught me how to run a dance and it came very much into my favor when I was a newly ordained priest running the largest dance in South Jersey for the students. It was great. It was there I learned how to decorate the gym, too. Oh, those were the days. Those were the days 
when we went to school for the grand total tuition of $15 a year and $2 for an athletic association fee. Those were the days when we were trained by fine priests and fine lay people. Those were the days when we were prepared for the lives that we are living now. And now these are the days when you and I are invited to sit down with our checkbooks and write them a little gift of thanks so that other young men, young women can continue to have the advances of a Catholic education. I ask you in your kindness to keep on with your song. This is Father Pat Lavin. Oh, by the way, Paul Perillo, you graduated from this school, you graduated from Newman, bring out your checkbook and send a little notice into the people here to say thank you for what you've received. I indeed will do that, Father Pat. Newman looks the same, it hasn't changed. And uh, I recognized uh, Mr. Perry, who was my uh, uh, theater director. I was in a number of uh, the stage productions there at Newman, and Frank Perry was always uh, the director. But please, as you've heard us mention so many times before on a Catholic magazine, uh, help the alumni associations, regardless if it's Newman, Goretti, or where, wherever. They really need your help more now than ever before. So please uh, find it in your heart to, uh, to make a donation and support your alumni associations. And my brother Ballard is an alumni of Bishop Newman, but I didn't realize until today, Paul, that he was at school at the same time as Father Pat Lavin. They used to know each other probably. Well, your brother must be kind of old then if he went to school with Pat Lavin. Uh, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, I want to ask everybody to please remember to tune in next Sunday night as we kick off Black History Month with a very special program. Oh. On our program next week, we will delve into the issue of racism and prejudice as it pertains to all of us, and in particular, what is being done in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia and the Diocese of Camden to eradicate racism in 1993. I'm sure you'll find it to be a very interesting program. Until then, good night. I'm Pat Shelton. And I'm Paul Perello. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week right here on Catholic Magazine. Set materials for Catholic Magazine provided by Tag Lumber Incorporated, serving the Delaware Valley for over 75 years. And by John Wanamaker, fine stores in the Delaware Valley. one of many hundreds of women who have been deeply touched by the Women's Prayer Luncheon. These luncheons began eight years ago and are still going strong. We start with a delicious lunch, then we pray, sing, and end with a teaching. The next luncheon will be February 16th, and the cost is only $11. So don't miss this opportunity. Once you come, you'll be joining us every month. Just call 215-896-1970. We'll be waiting for that call.